A significant change in semiconductor technology is about to happen. We are shifting towards fog sheet transistors. This technology is one step ahead of the current state-of-the-art transistors, and it will enable 20% area reduction and about 10% speed improvement. And this is an essential step towards building the ultimate transistor. Let me explain. You know, every single chip, CPU or GPU, is built of transistors. And we are talking about billions of transistors. And those are my favorite devices, because they are so tiny and so humble. Without these transistors, none of the modern technologies like AI, uh, space rockets or computer chips would ever exist. For decades, we were shrinking the size of transistors to pack more and more computing power in a single chip. Nowadays, all the cutting-edge chips are built in FinFET technology. For example, the latest AMD and Apple chips are built in 5 nanometer FinFET. See, that's how a FinFET transistor looks like. Basically, we took a planner old-school transistor and then stretched the channel up as a vertical fin. Compared to the original planar transistor, FinFET is more compact. That's why we can fit more of them per area. And then, in the last years, even more advanced version of transistor was developed. So from FinFET, we came to nanosheet transistors. Basically, they took a FinFET transistor, turned it horizontally, and then stacked several of such structures on top of each other. With this transistor technologies, companies like IBM were able to achieve really very high transistor density. Just imagine, they are able to fit about 50 billions of transistors in a 10 mm square. And companies have just recently started to manufacture these nanosheet devices. And this transistor technology was the densest until today. So now, finally, we're about to move to the new fog sheet devices. See here, it's a structure similar to nanosheets. But instead of one device, there are two, separated by a wall, by a dielectric wall. In the past, with nanosheet devices, we had to place them separately with a certain gap for better performance. And this was obviously a waste of area. And now, with this new architecture, we can squeeze devices so to say more close together and in this way we can win 20% of area and also get to the 24% of reduction in power. These fog sheet transistors are developed by iMac. I don't know if you've heard of them. It's a research institute based in Belgium. They are mostly focused on research, like developing new technologies. According to iMac, this transition from nanosheet transistors to the fog sheet will be very fast and smooth, with just few additional fabrication steps required. And that's good, because eventually a fog sheet architecture is an intermediate step in the evolution of transistors, because the end goal is to stack multiple devices on top of each other, and the ultimate transistor will be the vertical one. In general, the idea is to fold two nanosheet devices on top of each other, and in this way to build so-called C-FAT, complementary FAT transistor. You see here, two devices are stacked on top of each other, and this will be the ultimate CMOS device. If you watched my previous videos, you might be now wondering, so what is actually the difference to the IBM's VFAT transistor? This is the vertical FAT transistor, which was developed by IBM about a year ago. They had a FinFAT transistor, but instead of multiplying the number of fins horizontally, they decided to flip it vertically. Basically, they flipped transistor on its side. In this way, they can have smaller footprint and fit even more devices per area. Imagine it like skyscrapers in New York City. When the area is limited and you want to fit maximum in it, the city is growing vertically. The concept of fog sheet is similar, in a way, to grow vertically, but they stack multiple transistors on top of each other. This means we can interconnect these transistors with wires at multiple levels. And this gives more freedom to the EDA tools, to the routing tools, and this is for sure beneficial for the area. 
IBM and iMac are not the only companies developing stack transistors. Also, Intel is working on it. Just some weeks ago, once again, Intel presented their technology plans at ITF World in Belgium. You can see here on the slide. It's all started in 1959 with planar transistor. And then the chip makers moved to FinFET. Then, in 2024, Intel plans to debut gate all around transistors, which is actually Intel's version of nanosheet transistors. Intel 20A node will feature four nanosheets. You see here, there are four nanosheets, and each surrounded by the gate entirely. That's why it's called gate all around. And after that, Intel plans to move to stacked transistor, basically placing several gate all around devices on top of each other. And this will keep more slow alive for years to come. What's interesting about new process nodes? There is this trend. I don't know if you noticed. Apple has booked nearly 90% of the TSMC capacity for their 3 nanometer process this year. And it was done in advance, while 3 nanometer fabrication is still kind of ramping up. On the other hand, some companies like AMD and Qualcomm, who originally planned to place huge 3 nanometer orders, may just entirely skip the whole process node. And this is all due to high fabrication costs and fab capacity. You know, the whole semiconductor industry relies just on a very few manufacturers, especially when we are talking about the most advanced process nodes. And semiconductor is essential for every modern technology, from space rockets to cars to AI. If you would like to understand deeper how modern technology works, Brilliant offers a variety of courses on modern technology. For example, they have classes explaining how computer memory works, and then there is an interesting class on how wireless communication works. What I like about Brilliant is that it's not just the theory. There are a lot of visualizations and visual explanations which makes complex concepts easy to understand. Basically, you are learning through solving problems and puzzles, which is the most effective and fun way to learn. Also, they have courses on computer science and programming, which you can take. For example, they offer a course on Python, which is one of the most in-demand programming languages as of today. And you can learn it in a fun way. If you want to try Brilliant, use my link brilliant.org slash check and sign up for free. With that, you can try all that Brilliant has to offer for 30 days for free. And the first 200 subscribers who will use this link will get 20% off annual premium subscription. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video. Ciao!